Welcome back to Sailing Ruby Rose from the Saigon shipyard. It is the 13th of April today, which means Easter has passed. I've spent two really amazing weeks with Therese. We just caught up with a lot of things, caught up with each other. And now that we're down to what, two months until we get this boat finished, we are planning cruising, cruising destinations. But over the next couple of months, what I'm going to be talking to you about in depth is the parts of this boat, the parts of this boat that make it a blue water cruiser, the specifications, the deep dive into electronics, into solar, into all the things that we need and why we need them. Keep watching. These episodes are going to be different, technical, but hopefully super informative. So let us start this episode. Well, we do this a lot, but actually this is for the last time, one of the last few times we will do this. We're going to start this episode by just taking a, a quick, a quick perambulation around Supernatural, whole one. And just to kind of like show you some of the things that they've done, because there are a lot of things that they kind of picked up on a test cell that they're like, okay, we are going to change this. This, for instance, the breakfast bar, now wood-faced, this entire panel wood-faced. It looks a hundred times better. That looks amazing. So that is exactly what's going on there. I really like this now. Perfect. So this is the, the netting system. And obviously all these are all the battens here, but this lightweight system for kind of catching the sail, with the main sail in place, it's almost impossible to see this, but now we can actually see how that's all going to come together. So other things, just I wanted to cut through you this. This is the, the new version two of the whole, uh, the, the console that takes all the instruments at the nav desk. They've decided to put it in gray. They've also decided now to recess some of the panels, put a smoke glass screen around because during the test sail, they found out that there's just too much light and it obscures your night vision. So these are little points that get picked up. So just as I look at this, all these little features are really coming together to kind of make uh, Supernatural the boat that actually the little features that it needs to be to make it absolutely perfect. And as I said, Ruby Rose 2, all these workers, the electronics guys are in doing all this, all this boarding is going in and we are super, super excited to see it. What I would say to you is that really at this point, Therese and I are so close that we are planning a summer cruise and we're in spring. So keep watching. We are almost at the finish line. But I think we've seen enough of hole one, supernatural. And I want to show you hole two, which as you know is Uber Rose 2. And I want to kind of have a good look around to show you what they're doing. So our electronics, we are full Master Vault, full BNG. There's a lot of things we need to show you there. This is a 220 boat, so it's not 110 boat. So there's different systems. Master Bolt have a different system for 210 over 110 or 220 over 110. Big lithium battery thing there. And I'm going to do a lot about, I'm going to do a lot of discussion about the batteries um, and how those batteries, so if someone's got a Hoover going. So I'm back in the apartment. It is insanely hot at Ho Chi Minh at the moment. It is Actually, yesterday was the hottest day that Vietnam ever recorded. So I thought I'd just take a little bit of time outside of the factory where I've got the aircon on full to describe to you exactly what I mean about the electronics on our boat. I will go into a very deep dive on this, but I just want to clarify exactly where we are. So the boat is a 24 volt system. So for our domestic power, we will be running navigation systems using the 24 volt system. We will need a step down transformer for some of the items that only run at 12 volt. But for larger boats, you tend to need a 24 volt system to run lights and kind of all the, all the DC equipment that you've got on the boat. For AC, we are going for um, a 220 volt system. So that is a European standard. To the best of my knowledge, it is only uh, the North America and Brazil that use the, the, the 110 volt system. And so for us, it's not just about, you know, I know that you can get step down transformers and, you know, take a 110 boat to a 220 region if you're sailing around the world. For us, it's to do with the practicality of having a 110 boat outside of the US. For instance, if I want to buy a blender, I have to buy a 110 blender, I've got a 110 boat. And so therefore we will be running a 220 boat because we will be in Europe and sailing around the world where everything will be 220. So regarding the lithium battery bank, we have got the master bolt battery banks 
um, coupled with 80, 1980 watts of solar, and then we've got two master volt uh, smart alternators, which pull out, I think they're 200, 200 amp each, so we're looking at 400 amps, and I will tell you that they will charge the whole battery bank in under 30 minutes. We did this on the test sale of Whole One Supernatural, so I know that it has the capacity to charge all this. So uh, once we actually have the boat, which again is probably four to five weeks away, we will be able to do a comparative analysis of how quickly are we charging our battery bank? Because I know that a lot of you are talking about regenerative energy and the regen capabilities. We're gonna do a practical application of it and how do those master of our alternators, charge the battery, and how much are we getting from our solar array. So this is all to come. Anyway, I just wanted to give you a brief overview away from the factory. I'll just zip back to the factory now using the magic of uh, editing. And uh, I'll be back this week to film some more. So yeah, I hope that is inspiration for you. So while the guy is hoovering, let's just go through, oh, have a good look at the deck. So again, the difference is here. We are running with a pretty fancy set of sails. We are going with the GPR light skins. We are also going with the Doyle asymmetric uh, and also the Doyle screecher, all in like very, very, very high tech material. We're going to do a whole thing about the sail design. So now the small details, things like this. Some of you may have noticed and some of you cheeky little buggers will have noticed that actually the front windows on the 1370, the hole number one, they had to be propped open. And that is because essentially they, the, the gas struts, they tested those windows when the company that they were outsourcing the gas struts, they were tested in the wrong position. So they had to just order new gas struts. So now you can see that there is no wood. There is no option for the piece of wood. Um, those windows open absolutely fine, held open by three grass struts. So that is now in place. And that has obviously been changed over for hole one and hole two. And now, as you can see, hole three has them as well. So, you know, the glasswork team have gone in and done all that. All the stainless steel is on here. The guardrails are all on here. And inside, the electronics guys are just finishing off the electronics of Ruby Rose 2. And as we move forward, other things have now kind of shown up. So again, we talking pretty extensively about our audio visual stuff. So, yes, yeah, six speaker fusion system, which we're pretty happy with. We do like listening to music at low volumes and anchorages, of course. So we've got that. So that's whole fusion systems going in, TV going in. We are going to make sure that the fusion system is connected to the TV. So that when we have cinema nights, and I hear that some of you are actually even thinking about putting projectors on these folks, which is insane. But yeah, so Ruby Rose 2 coming on very, very, very well. Barbecue in place, you've seen shots of that being dry fitted. A hive of activity. A little bit about what we're doing, a little bit about Ruby Rose 2, a little bit about how this boat is progressing and she is progressing super well. So I do think very soon this will all be done and we'll be back in the water. But again, over the coming weeks, we are going to be talking a lot about the in-depth specification of Ruby Rose 2 because I think you want to kind of want to know all this. And, and so this is what we're going to aim to get to you. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. We'll be back really soon. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and we will be sailing this summer. Take care. Goodbye.